Alright, so um, this is the completed Gixxer 600 front end um, on my SV650 and like I said in the first video this is off a 2006-2007 Gixxer 600 um, and I'm putting it onto my 2007 naked SV650. So I'm just going to go from the top and then um, work my way down to the bottom. I'll go over each of the different components and also lessons learned along the way. So starting from the top, um, these are the SVRP 3.5 inch riser clip-ons. Um, no issues here, these are the 50 millimeter size uh, that, and they pretty much just bolt right on and shipping was really fast so I highly recommend them. Um, and um, I'm using, I'm still using the same SV OEM uh, clutch perch and um, these are the CRG RC2 clutch levers which I didn't have to change and I'm using the same um, signal housing as for the SV and I'm reusing the grip the um, bar end mirrors and bar end so this is the entire left side so moving to the right side I bought the optional SVRP brake reservoir mount you see here which makes mounting the Gixxer 600 brake reservoir much easier um, as I mentioned in the first video I'm uh, so I switched from the SV master cylinder to this Gixxer 600 radio master cylinder and this required me to get the corresponding um, brake lever. So this is the CRG RC2 shorty brake lever made specifically to fit the Gixxer 600 radio master cylinder. Um, and also, like I mentioned in the first video, uh, because I'm using the three and a half inch risers, I had to get uh, my front brake lines refitted. And uh, I actually took that opportunity to just go ahead and get um, to upgrade to the um, Galfer stainless steel brake lines. And these, this is the two brake line design. So you see, there's a double banjo coming out of the master cylinder, and then each cable leads individually to the left and right calipers. Um, so the first lessons learned here is that the double banjo bolt supplied by Gelfer is not the correct threading for the Gixxer 600 radio master cylinder. So what I did was I just reused the double banjo that was originally on the right uh, radial caliper for the Gixxer 600 and everything works fine that way. Um, okay, so moving along, I reused the, um, the throttle housing and the R6 throttle tube and grip from the SV650 and I also reuse the bar end mirror and bar end. Okay so moving further down um, I had a big problem actually with the 0607 upper clamp um, and that was really my fault for not reading closely enough on the SV Riders forum. Um, the 06 plus upper clamp actually rubs against the SV650 second generation frame so the easiest route would be to use the 0405 um, front end and they'll bolt right onto your second generation SV but if you are using the 06 plus front end you have to uh, do one of two things to replace the 0607 upper clamp so you can either use the 0405 upper clamp um, but if you use that then you have to widen the fork tube uh, holes because the 0405 forks are actually smaller than the 0607 um, and your second option which is what I ultimately used was the Gixxer 1000 the 0405 Gixxer 1000 upper upper clamp and when you use that you don't have to machine anything but the problem is um, the ignition is dead dead straight on so if I wanted to lock my steering column I need the wheel pointing forward instead of um, the usual pointing to the left so pointing forward is obviously not as good because someone could just roll your bike away forward but um, not having to machine anything was more beneficial to me than having a steering column steering lock that locks to the left so that's something you're gonna have to decide so working further down um, there's two castle nuts here which hold the um, front triple in place onto the uh, front of the frame. So these castle nuts are made of soft aluminum. You can take them off using a flathead screwdriver and a hammer, but if you use that approach, what happens is the soft aluminum gets dented up pretty easily. So what I found was you can actually remove these bolts using a spanner wrench and one 
One tool that works for sure on the SV front end, uh, Castle Nuts, is the part tool, part number HCW5. You can use that to directly take off these Castle Nuts. Um, but if you want the correct torque specifications, you're going to need to get the OEM Suzuki tool, which is pretty expensive. So um, I just torqued it pretty tight, but not too tight. <laughs> so it's uh, again, if you need, if you want the exact specification for the torque, you're going to need the Suzuki tool, which is really expensive. Um, okay, so next is how to mount the turn signal mounts and the headlight and the front cowl to the fork. So as you see here I used two of these Tebow clamps. Um, this was actually quite a pain to work with. You can see my forks got scratched up a bit so if you want to avoid the scratches you may want to get some silicon covering to go between the clamp and the fork. Um, the size of these are 1.75 inches. I originally bought one and a half inches which don't fit because uh, if you look closer the all right, so the audio on my GoPro actually went out at this point, so um, I'm just going to dub over the video. So here I'm just talking about why you need to get T-bow clamps that are larger than your actual fork diameter. And this is because if you look at the way the turn signal mounts are mounted to the clamps, um, it is actually between the T-bolt and the clamp itself. And so what this does is it pushes the clamp inwards and it closes the diameter of the clamp by about 4 to 5 millimeters. So you really want to make sure you plan ahead for that. And the T-bolt clamp size that I found that works for the 0607 Jixxer 600 fork is 1.75 inches. Um, and now I'm just talking a little bit about the black piece that you see behind the turn signal mount. So that black piece is used to mount the front cowl to the turn signal mounts. And ideally what you want to do is um, you want to drill through the hole in the black piece that allows you to um, push the top T-bolt clamp through it. But what I found was that black piece is actually made of a really hardened steel, so I was unable to drill through it using uh, the tools I had on hand. So what I did was I just tilted the black piece up, which caused the entire front cowl to tilt forward just by, just by a little bit. And I found no stability issues with the setup. Actually, it works really well. So when the audio cuts back in, I'm going to talk about how to mount your speedometer. Speedometer, you really have one of two choices using this setup. You can either drill holes into the front headlamp and mount the speedometer from the back, or you can use what I did. I bought the um, this mount here that's holding up the speedometer is the Aztec 8 speedometer mount. Um, I'll put a link to that in the description section, but you can see it mounts the speedometer directly to this um, to this piece right here, and then these arms go and are connected to the end of the upper T clamps, as you can see there and there. Um, but if you don't want to use T clamps, you can actually also buy um, fork mounts specifically designed for this project from Aztec 8. Um, they're a little expensive, but they look really nice. And I actually had them in my first video, but um, the ones I bought were too big for this. I bought it for 53 millimeters, which fits this bottom um, this bottom diameter. But I actually need it for this taper diameter, which is 48 millimeters. So that was kind of a bummer. So working further down, um, again, you have to use the Jixer front wheel because the SV front wheel won't fit. And you also have to use the Jixer radio caliper brakes because the SV brakes won't fit. And now, finally, I want to talk a little bit about the uh, magnet and the Hall effect sensor setup to get the SV speedometer to correctly read the speed. Um, so what I did was I mounted eight rare earth magnets around the brake rotor that you see here. Um, each magnet is held in place by a uh, magnet cup holder, which is bolted from the back. Um, and I have a link in the description section for how to uh, fabricate the holders such that you can bolt them. And I have the, mag uh, the Hall effect sensor mounted right there behind the fender. So what I did was I just cut a one inch by three inch piece of sheet aluminum and, and drilled a hole on each end. And the larger hole is used to mount the Hall effect sensor that you see there, and the smaller hole is just directly bolted on to the back of this fender nut. So, and then I bent the uh, sheet, the piece of sheet aluminum such that the face of the Hall effect sensor is approximately 
uh, about two millimeters away from the rotating magnets. And another good lesson to learn here is that the face of the magnets, uh, the face of the magnets that's facing the Hall effect sensor has to be attracted to the Hall effect sensor and not repulsed, or else um, it won't properly read the speed. So that's pretty much all I have to say about this front end swap. Um, I plan on bringing this to the dealership sometime next week to get it professionally set up because I don't really, I mean, it's pretty difficult to set this up um, to your weight specification without at least having a second or third person there to take measurements as you're sitting on the bike. And I don't really trust myself doing it. So I'm going to bring it to the dealership. Um, and another reason is because I recently swapped the back the rear shock, as you see here, this is a ZX-10R shock, and I have a separate video showing how to do a detailed installation um, of this. So, swapping the front and the back, um, I really feel more comfortable riding with a professional setup. So, if you guys have any questions or comments about the uh, Jixxer front end swap for the second, ge for the second generation SV650, just... Um, Feel free to leave a comment below or send me a private message and I'll definitely get back to you. Thanks.